Bingo! Four o'clock rock here on Think Tech. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, our favorite energy show every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And my favorite co-host, Ray Starling. Hi, Ray. Say hi. Hi, Jay. All right. Good to be here. Okay, okay. And we have in the studio, we have Layla uh, Taherali, okay, who is with uh, Terviva, who won an award. We'll talk about that. Hi, Layla. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Yes, and also, to adoupri mes jus. Wait. N'ai pas peur. That means, don't be afraid. Je suis là. I'm here for you. To adoupri mes jus, you will always have value in my eyes. It's getting good now. Et je t'aime, and I love you. But that, that's a statement of God's relationship with humankind. So it's nothing romantic. Very deep. Okay. So, my French good enough? It is. It is okay, yes. we're going to do the whole show in French. <laughs> Lee, that means you too. Anyway, oh, and Lee Bonjour. Steinmetz. Ah, Bonjour. excellent, excellent. There he is. Allez-y. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Oh, my okay. Goodness. Ray, I hope you can do this. <laughs> At least Steinmetz is in the county engineer's office in Kauai. They also won an award. Uh, so, we're going to talk about awards today. And then this is springing off the Hawaii Clean Energy Day program on uh, August 16th, just a little more a week, a week ago, mm -hmm. which was really a splendid program. And, uh, you know, Ray was there. In fact, he was on one of the panels. And he is actually uh, on the show that is now playing, Think Tech on OC16 show, that is playing all week, which is uh, what I call a summarized version of eight hours of, of conference that day. What do you think of that conference, Ray? I thought it was a great conference. It's uh, bringing things closer to where we need to be for 100% clean energy. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your condensation of that whole day. Yeah. And Lee, how about you? I mean, I remember we, we actually interviewed there, uh, you there, and we are talking about multimodal transportation, and you wouldn't let me off the hook for a minute, as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun conversation, Jay. And um, yeah, I thought it was a really great conference. It's really good to get people together to talk about um, clean energy. I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit more. My, my angle on that is more mode shift than fuel type. And um, I always feel that that's an important component to really bring into the energy discussion, and I'm, I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk about that more. And I feel that ultimately you could make me agree with you, <laughs> but it's ultimate. <laughs> okay, Lelo, you were there too. Yes, I was there. What did you think, what happened there on Clean Energy Day? I really, really liked it. Um, what I really liked was the update on where we are at today toward this really, really good goal of 100% yeah. in yeah. 2014. You think we can do it? Of course. Okay. We have to believe in it. We have to believe in it, yeah. Only question is you have to fashion a path away. Un bois. Un bois. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the fact is that this program, one of the high points of the program uh, was that uh, Sharon Moriwaki, uh, the uh, co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and Mike Hamnett, the other co-chair, they gave uh, six awards away. Um, and we are systematically going through the awardees. <laughs> uh, last week we did a couple of awardees, and we're doing two more today. And uh, let's go women first, okay? Can we do that? Okay. Leila, it's your turn. So you got an award, uh, or I should say Terviva got an award, for uh, uh, transformation achievement, transformational achievement in clean energy. That's quite something, and there was so much publicity about it, and such a crowd, and the adulation we have. Adulation. <laughs> that much. <laughs> that much. <laughs> so, uh, tell us about first. Tell us about Tel Terviva. What is it? Uh, what does it do? What do you do for it? And then we'll talk about the award. Sure. So Terviva is a startup. We are based in California, and we have um, two big projects: one in Hawaii and one in Florida, where we're planting trees. Uh, the trees we're planting are pongamia. It's a legume tree. And it's a tree uh, that is producing every year some seeds. And from the seeds, we can extract some oil. Because these seeds are very similar to soybeans. So just like soybeans, we can extract some oil that we can refine into biodiesel. That's one of the products. And with the seed cake left, we can do animal feed. And the seed is actually enclosed in a pod. And with the shell, we can burn them for electricity. So this three products are really important for Hawaii, 
for both renewable energy through the oil and the electricity, and also for sustainable food through the animal feed with seed cake. Wow, you don't leave anything behind. No. Nope. That's fabulous. <laughs> so how far advanced are you? Are you, you know, actually making the seed? Are you actually extracting the oil? Are you actually, you know, giving animal food and all that? Is all these things, three things actually happening now? So that's a very good question. What is happening right now is like we have 50 trees planted in Kunia. It was our, our first pilot here in Hawaii. These trees are four years old and we harvested them for the first time this year. Uh, and it was a consequent harvest. Uh, it was about 12 kg of pods per tree in average, which, which is like more than we expected first. So we had very good results. And in Haleiwa, we have a 50 acres orchard. So also really on track on our objective. Same kind of trees. Exactly. Same thing, Pongamia. Mm -hmm. In the same time, we are having research on the animal feed. We are developing some animal feed with the Pongamia seed cake with Texas A&M. Do they like it? They do like it. What kind of animals? Cattle. Beef. Oh, cattle. Yes. We don't have feed here for cattle. Exactly. That's why so it's so important. this is really a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. You know, we have to ship all that stuff in, and yes. it takes all the fuel to get it here, and it's really not efficient at all. So they either ship the food to Hawaii, or when it's too expensive, they actually have to ship the, the cows cattle, to the mainland. Which has happened for years. It. Exactly. Ship the cattle to the mainland, feed them there, fatten them up, then bring them back. Exactly. Oh, that is so humble. So we try to stop that. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so now we know. And what do you do for them exactly? I am associate for them. Okay. So I work on the number side. Uh, mm. I work about the grant that we had with the energy, Accelera energy Accelerator. And I also look at all the invoice. I look at all the different partners, coordinate everybody to work in the field. Yeah, I recall that uh, when William Bush got up there, he received Cush. the award. Cush. Uh, when William Cush got up there and received the award, the first thing he wanted to say is, Thanks to the Energy Accelerator, yes. he was very, very yes. uh, supportive of them. Yes. Uh, why? What is that? What have they done for you? So the Energy Accelerator is a startup program, and they just help to develop this ecosystem of energy startup in Hawaii for, uh, for us all together to go toward this, this goal of 100% renewable energy. And they're really trying to understand what are our challenges and how they can help us. They really want to be a bridge. Mm -hmm. So why, why are you here exactly? I mean, is Hawaii a special laboratory for Terra Viva? Is this an important part of your development? Because you, you started on the mainland. You are yes. weighted, so to speak, on the mainland. But now you're here. And it's not just because of the energy accelerator. It's because you find Hawaii attractive in some yes, way. Yes, it's because uh, for the tree, we need a good climate, which is a hot climate, uh, Pongamia, is like really well suited even for drought, but not for cold. So we try to have a look at these climates that suits our tree. And Florida was part of it, and Hawaii is also part of it. And then we also try to see where there's land where we can plant the trees. And we want land that is underproducive or even marginal. Here in Hawaii, there's a lot of abandoned land after the sugarcane and the pineapple yes, plantation yes. that stops. So that's why we're here, for those two, two big things. And also because we just fit in this ecosystem of, you know, wanting to do more for renewable energy. Yeah, so you could actually have a huge facility here, ultimately. Yes, we would. Because it's the right climate. We would like to have a, a big impact, yes. And you could give us an awful lot of um, biofuel out of this. So, Ray, I have yes. a question for you, Ray. How do you spell Pomgania? <laughs> P-O-M-G-A. <laughs> N-I-A. Yes. Oh, all right, good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, Sorry, that was so unfair. <laughs> okay, so now you, you won an award. Yes, Let's, did. What did you do to deserve this award? What, what project, you know, uh, what, what, what happened to make, to make the light, the hot light focus on you? Yes, so it was, as you said, the award for transformational achievement. Yeah. So it's what we achieved that has been, you know, um, uh, awarded, which is our 50 trees in Cunha that we harvested this year, and the 50 acres that we planted in Haleiva. And it was also the award for integration of sectors, and it's, all, it's because we're working with a lot of different partners. Nurseries, farmers. Oh, yes. you have relationships. Landowners, yes, exactly. Yeah. So what, uh, who, who are your partners? 
So as I said, we're working with nurseries, nurseries. here and farmers and uh, landowners, and mm -hmm. then also down the line, downstream markets. So yeah. we also like talk with ranchers, with uh, Pacific Biodiesel, and different companies that are already here in Hawaii. Okay, and you were recognized by uh, by the Energy Policy Forum for a transformational achievement in the sense that you you are showing are showing this could be done here, and you are suggesting it could be done in scale here. Yes, and that's our goal. Yes, and it could change things around. Yes. Um, so what stands between where you are now and disruptive changes? As you said, it's it's the word scale. And that that would be the difference. Like we're showing that we can do it. And uh, this award just reinforced our intention to do more and to keep on proving what we want to prove. And now it's a matter of scaling. Uh, okay, Ray, your witness. I've, I've got one quick question. And, sure. and uh, you know, because we're out here in the middle of the Pacific, we often worry about sort of having a new species come in uh, to uh, maybe, you know, take over uh, what's naturally here. And ha have you looked into that at all in terms of the bringing a new tree in and, and cultivating that, uh, I take it that you have and there's not any issue with that. So it, I, as you said, yeah, it's, it's a very, very important question, especially in places like Hawaii, where conservation is so important. And Pongamia has actually been introduced 150 years ago by Polynesian. So there are uh -huh. some Pongamia. Introduced here in Hawaii. Yes, okay. here in yeah. Hawaii. So there are already some Pongamia trees in some botanical gardens here. Oh, really? And there is even one in UH. So this tree has been introduced a okay. long time ago, and yeah, it's, it's not a new tree, so to speak, for right. Polynesian. Right. Well, I've got a second question. What, what do you see, I, I take it, I, I read somewhere that it takes about eight years to, to get to where the trees are producing yeah, a lot. Sure. Right. And when you get there, uh, what do you what do you expect to see if your all your plans go according to uh, schedule yes. in terms of being able to provide how much could you provide per acre of the stuff that we're really interested in the biofuels yes so at full maturity we expect 400 gallons of oil per acre which is eight to ten times more than soybeans per acre Mm -hmm. to give okay. you an idea. That's good. what we That's expect. a good answer, actually. <laughs> She's ready Better for you. Better than soybeans. She's ready for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this could be the magic, the magic tree, then. This could provide us with, I mean, <clears throat> the big question is, uh, can we make transportation run on this stuff? Can we build enough, can we grow enough trees to fill the existing cars? Somebody told me recently, I don't know if it's true, maybe you know, but you can you can take uh, biofuel. You, can, you have to process it. But you can take biofuel and put it in an existing gas fossil gas car, and it will run. So if that is true, that means we could all those cars out there would be the natural recipients of of the oil that comes off this Pamogania Pamogania <laughs> plant. Yes. Right? Am I right about this? So you're right with the difference that with the Pongamia oil, we produce biodiesel, so we can feed cars or engines oh, that runs on diesel. C can you convert so it into a substitute for gas? Um, for gas? I mean gasoline. Gasoline, no, not for gasoline, just okay. for diesel. Okay, time to So tractors the on the Honolulu bus, for example, yeah, they do run on diesel, okay. so but that Jay, we can, yes. yes. But Jay, we're gonna have you driving an electric vehicle and we produce the electricity with the bio diesel, right? So yeah, yeah. Either we just skip that gasoline me. part. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't want gasoline, but if we can make biofuel work like gasoline, that right. would be good. Yeah. And if we can make cars, you know, we can incentivize electric cars. There's actually a very interesting. In I saw today that a bill was introduced in Congress to give tax credits mm. equal to solar tax credits to batteries. And that's going to change things. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, assuming it gets passed. Because then the, the other question is, well, how about uh, a, a tax credit for, a, a bigger tax credit for electric cars, for cars that use biofuel? I mean, you, in order to change human conduct, you have got to give people incentives or disincentives. It doesn't happen by love. You're as right. much as we want. You're it, absolutely it, it right. It doesn't happen yeah. by love. Well, it depends how, you know, when you want it to happen. 
Well, right after this break. If, if we want it to happen fast, it's better to have it. Okay, we're good. <laughs> 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 we're going to take a short break now, now that you said that. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on the theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii on thinktechhawaii.com, which broadcasts six live talk shows from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. every weekday, and then streams earlier shows all night long. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Hibachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Ray Starling, my co-host, with Layla Taherly uh, from Terra Viva who explained to us, uh, you know, the circumstances around her uh, Transformational uh, Achievement Award, the one she got with uh, William Cush, uh, the Hawaii manager of Tel Tel Viva. And now we're going to go to another awardee, namely the County of Kauai, which is such a prominent and, you know, great contributor to Clean Energy Day. It's really wonderful. And um, uh, uh, David um, Bissot was there. He spoke a couple of times. And I listened to him because I had to edit the movie. And everything he said was like golden. It was so interesting. And you work with him, don't you? Although you're in the county engineer's office, Lee, um, he's, he's, he's a, a CEO of KIUC, so you must see him at least from time to time. Oh, yeah. So actually, I'm in the planning department. Uh, my office is in the Department of Public Works, but I'm in planning. But yes, uh, we work with KIUC all the time, and they're a wonderful partner in the things that we're working on. Yeah, can you explain to me why Kauai seems to be so clever about everything? <laughs> is it the water? <laughs> it is the water. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the water, the air. Um, yeah, I. that's a great question. Um, gosh, there's so many things we have. Um, well, our award was about partnership and collaboration. So first of all, we have fabulous partners that we work with, which makes our job easy and fun. Um, we have fantastic leadership with our mayor, our council, our oh, He was there department. last week. Mm -hmm. What a great man he um, is. I, I really like, I admire him so much. Um, he, Bernard yeah. Carvalho. Um, and I mean, he's, he's stood on the right mm -hmm. side of so many issues, really appreciate that. And he's been very good to us. Sharon Marie Walker and I went out there one time, we interviewed him. He was so kind and gracious to us. He's just, yeah, he's a fantastic mayor. He, um, he really does a lot with leadership. Um, the, again, the word that we got was about partnership, and he, that is what he's all about, is working together on things, and that just makes it a lot easier. I think, you know, another, honestly, another advantage that we have is we're small, and so some of the bureaucratic hurdles that uh, larger places have were able to overcome more easily, I think, just because of our, our size and our scale. And, um, you know, you get a few people on board and watch out. You can really accomplish a lot. What about this nimble thing? Uh, I shouldn't say the nimble thing. What I want to ask you about is whether the fact that you have a utility with members makes you more nimble. Um, you know, on the one hand, on one hand mm -hmm. um, more membership and transparency can lead to mm, greater collaboration, greater what do you call it, public support. On the other hand, it can also lead to greater protest, <laughs> which tends to stop things. So how does that work? I mean, is it an asset or a liability to have the utility, you know, respond so directly to the members in Kauai? If well, you don't want to answer that, that is a really good question, and I do okay. not feel like I'm really an expert on the area of of our utility. I mean, I can say as a member of the cooperative that um, I think there is a huge value with the 
utility being directly accountable to you know everybody on Kauai, all the members of the cooperative so it's not like a corporate structure that is perhaps nationwide or larger than just Kauai. i mean their accountability is to the people of Kauai, and i think that is that is a huge advantage um i also think as a community as a county that there's a very strong environmental ethic here so the kinds of things that KIUC is trying to do in terms of renewable energy, I mean, they've, they're have they so over the top in terms of achieving their renewable energy goals, and there's there's really strong community support for that. So, um, I don't know. It seems to work really well here. Yeah, but you know what? <clears throat> You're also realistic. It's not just pie in the sky. I was very impressed mm -hmm. when David Bissell got up in the storage panel, and he took his cell phone out of his pocket, and he said got lithium batteries in this thing and you and I know that this the batteries in my cell phone are not going to be as good in a year as they are today and mm. you have to recognize lithium batteries in, in that light of course he's right and so you know you can get batteries and you can do storage but you Ray you were on that panel <laughs> yeah um, but you also have to recognize that you know batteries don't solve all the problems and there are other ways to skin that cat so, I mean, it's the practicality, the sense of dealing with the realities that I really enjoy uh, about KIUC. Anyway, so let's talk about your award. Exactly what did, what did Kauai do to deserve this? Uh, what, I know the mayor is talking about uh, fashioning partnerships and building a team and all that, but what was the project that everybody worked on? So the, the project itself um, is revitalizing Lihui Town, and there's several steps that have gone into doing that um it started i would say with what uh, it started with our lihui town core urban design plan which really set the stage for rethinking what our town looks like and how it functions and it set up um and i'll get back to why this is related to energy but it really set up creating a walkable bikeable transit friendly town and really looking at what would that look like. So it looked at increasing density of uses, um, creating Rice Street, our main street, as a, as a really thriving commercial center, um, having good transit connections to other part of the island. Um, that, that was kind of the initial planning document that we started with that was approved by council. Um, we had some other really important planning documents along the way. Uh, the county of Kauai was the first county to pass a complete streets resolution after the state uh, required counties to do that um, really saying that as we design our streets we're going to look at all users not just cars but also look at people biking people walking all all the needs of different users and incorporate those into our streets. that's your favorite area isn't it yeah and then um we also passed what's called our multimodal land transportation plan that set some um, goals for mode shift of getting people out of cars and having other types of transportation for short trips. So for example, you know, setting up our town so you could live close enough to walk to the store, live close enough to walk to work. Um, you know, these seem like fairly simple concepts, but it actually gets really complicated when you try to actually change a town or make that make that happen. So those were some of the policy documents that we had to work with. Are they being the implemented, Lee? Yeah, so what happened most recently is we applied for a federal TIGER grant, um, which uh, is, a, is a grant from the United States Department of Transportation. There was about $500 million available nationally, and they received $10 billion worth of applications. So they were only able to award about 5% of the applications that they received. Too bad. They should and have had more money allocated for that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually something that, that the government's looking at now. But anyway, the County of Kauai was fortunate to be one of the 5% that received a grant. We received about $14 million. So now we are implementing, we're implementing these goals and policies and redesigning our streets. Um, we also did our first street reconstruction, which is Hardy Street, which now has uh, widened sidewalks, kids can walk to school, Wilcox School is right on this street. Um, we've slowed down traffic on this street, um, added a roundabout, which really f uh, makes for 
it slows down traffic, but it keeps the traffic flowing really well. Um, and we've added bike lanes. So we have a street model now that um, it's kind of like our first street that people can see. And now we'll be expanding and um, doing the rest of Luhui Town with the, with the Tiger Project. So, so we're moving into implementation now. And um, the reason for our award is all the partnerships that were created as we move through this process from planning into implementation. So local community groups, working with Hawaii Department of Transportation, Federal Highways, working with our congressional delegation to actually get this grant. That's so uh, great, Lee. It's really wonderful. You can put it together, make a plan, get the money, execute the plan. Um, and it just seems to be that it's a leadership thing as far as the state is concerned. We should all be watching you. We should all be flying over with our bicycles, getting out of Lihui <laughs> Airport there, coming downtown, riding around, taking a look at what it looks like. So anyway, congratulations on your Transformational Achievement Award. I, I really think uh, you deserve it. I think Kauai is very special. So Layla, do you have any cross-examination cross questions you want to ask Lee now? No, I'm good. She's good. <laughs> How about you? How about you, Ray? Uh, Lee, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, do, do you, uh, I know you must be familiar with what we're trying to do here in Honolulu, and I was wondering if you were suddenly whisked over here and put in charge, what would you do any differently from what we're doing? What, what do you think we're not emphasizing enough that uh, you would change if you, um, if you were here? <laughs> wow, that's a really great question. Um, I mean, I think the steps that Honolulu is going through is fantastic. I mean, working on the rail, that is, you know, that is a huge project. Oh, it's and fantastic, all right. I, <laughs> it's, um, I mean, it's, it's something that, you know, it, it needs to be done. And I think it's, you know, great. I hope there will be the political will to, to, to get it done, get it through. Um, I, and I also like how the city is looking at transit-oriented development, so where the stations are going to be, um, really looking at redeveloping those areas for kind of the same things that we're doing on Kauai, but at a much higher scale, a much higher density, that people can live and work and play near those, near where the, um, the light rail stations are going to be, and then really be able to live uh, without a car or needing a car much less in all of the, the daily activities. Mm -hmm. um, that's really huge. I think City County of Honolulu has had some of the same issues that we've had of, um, you know, it's when you're look when you're at the policy level, it's kind of soft and fuzzy and everybody says, yeah, let's do it. That's the direction we want to go. But then when you start building and having to make tough financial choices of how you're going to spend your money, then people start to go, hey, wait a minute, that isn't really what we want or said. So um, it's really important to keep moving forward once you, you know, once you start. So I know there's been some, um, some pushback, for example, on the protected bike lane, um, some things like that. But I think as those infrastructures get developed more, the bike infrastructure, the walking infrastructure, that people will really, um, will really grow to appreciate those things. And it, it takes time. You start to build, you know, when you start to build something, you can't visualize the whole network, but as it grows, then, then you start to see that. So, um, oh, I don't know that I would do anything differently. Years. I think it's just like push forward. You got to, got to keep going. Yeah. yeah. That's a great well, we, answer. That's absolutely yeah. true. And we hope you'll spend more time here and, uh, you know, sh show us what you're doing in Kauai so we can see and learn from it. Cause I think Kauai is a leader in this area. We look to you actually. Us, uh, keep, keep, keep in touch. So, uh, Layla, I want to offer you the opportunity to speak to the people. You can do this in English or French. <laughs> we, had, we had somebody do it in Chinese the other day. It was <laughs> wonderful. Um, and just tell them what you want them to remember about this whole discussion. I would really like if you would do it in French. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we are here for this award, and what I want to say is thank you. Um, merci beaucoup. Merci à tous pour uh, cette récompense. It, it really gives us strength to, to keep on working hard. And yeah, it's really important to us. Thank we you so much. We want you to do that. We are so happy you're here doing it. And we see great promise in it. And the Energy Policy Forum thinks you're terrific.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Leila. Good luck. And Lee, what, what, uh, what would you leave with our audience? Well, okay, so first of all, the same thank you. I think uh, the county is so appreciative to be recognized and have this award. And as I mentioned, the mayor is so much about partnership that to receive an award specifically about partnership, he and really the whole county is so thrilled about that. Um, to get on my soapbox just for a moment well, about you have 30 seconds. I enjoy the 30 I wanna... seconds you have. What was that? <laughs> you have 30 seconds to do that. Okay. I just wanted to say that um, I think talking about types of energy and fuel types is so important, but if we add the thought of, of reducing the number of car trips by looking at other ways of getting around, that that will also advance our, our energy goals so much, and it brings in a lot of other partners to talk with, health, education, business chambers of commerce they all want to get on board of revitalization and, and it expands the conversation expands the group that we can reach out to and have support these clean energy goals yeah never never forget um, energy efficiency you always have to crank that in and the other thing is never forget multimodal you have to crank that in too so as we go out i'm going to hold the uh, i'm going to hold the award which is Layla's award huh uh, for the camera so you can see the beautiful award that Stan Osterman made for Hawaii Clean Energy Day. And Ray, why, why don't you, uh, why don't you uh, close? Well, uh, tune in next week. You'll see a couple more uh, awardees, and uh, we've got a great uh, batch of awardees this year and all doing great things for the, for the state. So tune in next week and uh, see you the next two. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Layla. Thank you, Lee. Great to have you guys on. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you, Lee.